Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. It is Wednesday, February 6th, and... You know, we always get to talk about great music. That was really we fun. Do. And also education opportunities, um, professional development, education for uh, for people really of, of all ages, for parents. Lots of mm-hmm. things yesterday. We had some great uh, tips for parents when it comes to education today. Yeah. Early childhood. Um, excited to share about a great opportunity coming up in March right here in the Missouri District. Joining us in studio, Mr. Alan Freeman, assistant to the president of the Missouri District of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, specifically in the area of schools. That's a really long title. That is a really long title. title. (laughs) I like to shorten it and just say director of schools. That's a little bit easier. You're thinking of it as a superintendent, really. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, and it been in the Missouri District now almost three years. Tell us what you've been learning about uh, education <laughs> and schools in the Missouri District, the Lutheran oh, Church, Missouri Synod. A lot. You know, that's the great part about this role. I get to be a learner. I get mm-hmm. to go out and see all of our schools, see early childhood centers, see those that are large and connected to a church, those that are standalone. I get to see we have a couple of uh, almost one-room schoolhouses in the state of Missouri, in the Missouri District. In fact, one of ours has 38 students and one teacher for grades 2 to 8, also serving as principal and a teacher K to 1. They have the same number of schools as the public school (laughs) in that town. So it's amazing. Or we have schools that are quite large, you know, 500 students. I want to meet this teacher principal (laughs) one room. Sounds like a superhero. It's amazing. Yeah. But he or she probably doesn't have time to step away from the classroom to come <laughs> nope. talk with us. We'd have us. to take coffee hour on the road. <laughs> well, and, and Missouri District, I'm sure, has a, a large number of rural and small town congregations and schools as well, right? Absolutely. You know, we are spread throughout the state. We have uh, very small, again, you know, one room almost schools, a couple of those. Uh, we have schools that are pretty much in rural areas uh, that is a unique ministry those that are in suburban areas and quite large. And then we have some in urban areas. And unfortunately, not as many as we used to have, uh, especially in the St. Louis areas. But uh, those that are there, incredible ministries and incredible hearts for ministries and reaching out to the children and across the board. I mean, that is that is a great joy. Last week was Lutheran Schools mm-hmm. Week. You had several of our groups here singing yeah. and then interviewed here on the radio. Uh, I had devotions yesterday at the district office, and I said, every day, every week is Lutheran School. <laughs> uh, we get to spread the gospel message in sure. so many ways, and we have so many opportunities to do so to children, to families, to those that are two years old or infants, all the way through those that are ready to graduate and go off to college. And hopefully we've provided them a way of life. We know that we have uh, that way to eternal life. Mm-hmm. And here in the Missouri District, we are blessed with uh, you know schools that that range in age. Uh, we have a we have several high, Lutheran high schools here in Missouri. Um, but looking at the other end of the spectrum too, where do we stand in terms of early childhood education programs or early childhood? That's a great schools? question. So we have fifty one early childhood centers, fifty three K to eight schools, and nine high schools. A lot of people don't realize we have nine high schools wow. in the Missouri District. So thriving ministries throughout, uh, ministries that, again, uh, working every day. Uh, I was going to have two colleagues along with me Mm -hmm. today, our co-consultants for the Missouri District Early Childhood Commission, and they're at school doing (laughs) what they do. You know, so it is, it's immersed. Um, That's love, passion, Mm -hmm. vocation. Uh, We are so blessed with the families that are dedicated to Lutheran education, to the educators, to the administrators. And again, as I travel around the state, you ask, you know, what about my work? Seeing that is just so uplifting and so amazing and so joyful. You know, I I leave the schools and I see the work that's going on. I see the the faces on the the children and the parents' excitement. And I get to have a smile in my car as I drive back Mm -hmm. either to St. Louis or from a St. Louis school back to work. Or to another school that I'm going to, to mm-hmm. see the same thing. Yeah. You know, people always say, you walk into a Lutheran school, there's something different about it. We know what that difference is. We know that that difference is the precious gospel message. It's Jesus Christ. It's the light shining through our students and our educators and our administrators. And it's pervasive. 
It's in everything that we do. It's in the classroom. It's in drama productions. It's in our music. It's, again, pervasive. You just know it's everywhere. Sometimes people will say, well, I wish I'd known about this Lutheran school. Uh, it's the best kept secret. We need to change that. Mm -hmm. We need to let everyone know about our Lutheran schools and just how amazing they are, the work that they do. Uh, they are educationally excellent and in the midst, you know, praising God and all that we do, giving him all glory and proclaiming that precious gospel message. Absolutely. We are turning out the next <laughs> generation of Christian leaders. We need to do that each and every day. Yeah, well, we were you know halfway joking about our other two guests that are that are in the classroom, uh, but but uh, that is the reality that the educators spend so much of their time in the classroom and and. Um, uh, continuing education can be maybe difficult to come by, um, but why is it so important for these these continuing education opportunities, especially for early childhood educators? Absolutely, and you know part of it's affirming what the work that they do. It's coming together in His name, and uh, our worship services are amazing, especially with early childhood conferences. Uh, it is uh, learning best practices. It's sharing with one another. Uh, we have some great keynote speakers coming up at our Early Childhood Educators Conference, March 2nd. Uh, it will be held at Emmanuel Lutheran Church and School in Wentzville, Missouri. Uh, so we're blessed to hold it there. And it, it is an opportunity to learn from, with, and engage one another in all of our practices that we do. Uh, we want to be excellent in all things. To be excellent, you constantly have to challenge yourself uh, <laughs> with your craft, mm -hmm. uh, with your teaching, uh, you have to learn new ways. Uh, you have to uh, have opportunities to do so, which, again, we provide in so many different ways. Uh, early childhood educators, come to the conference. You will see amazing work, amazing dedication. Uh, you will see just energy abound and the excitement when they leave, knowing that they'll take these practices back to the classroom, to their families. Uh, it's just absolutely amazing and inspiring to be a part of. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about uh, the, the, the things that, that will be presented at this conference. Yeah. So we have uh, the keynotes, Creating a Compassionate Culture in Which Children and Adults Thrive. Uh, it's a presentation on conscious discipline and really looking at uh, a new way of, of doing things. Um, having students be accountable and grow uh, concentration on school families and development of that. Uh, so many times we teach students through discipline of don't do this, don't do that. Well, now it's a development of those skills and the understanding of accountability to one another and what they can do and, and how to self-consciously discipline on their mm -hmm. own and hold one another accountable and bringing that to early childhood, which is great. Uh, Project-based learning is another mm -hmm. item that's mm -hmm. one of our keynotes. Uh, and you think in early childhood, well, how can that be possible? Take a look at some of our early childhood schools and our websites, and you'll see how that's possible. Amazing work that's being turned out uh, and the projects and the, the growth that they have, mm -hmm. uh, including, you know, this morning, I just um, was reading an article before I came in, <laughs> uh, letting, letting students be bored, you know, <laughs> developing that thinking skill sure. and how, yeah. how we right now want to fill all that time or they fill it in so many different ways or computers or phones or you name it. Uh, and we need to allow them to be bored and become creative. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to allow them to problem solve on their own and not jump in so quickly. Uh, brain development in early childhood is amazing. I mean, you look at studies, that's the, the time of brain growth. Um, so uh, that's some of our conference activity and some of our focus as well. Uh, Playtime. And a lot of people, you know, think, well, you have to have structured, you know, you have to have all these activities for them. Uh, well, you know, studies again have shown free them up, allow them to have playtime, unstructured playtime, uh, tactile learning. You get, give them items to move and to manipulate and play with. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you know, as a, as a person who is not strong in early childhood, that was not uh, my degree. I've learned an awful lot from our <laughs> early childhood educators and directors. And at the conferences, I get to have fun because I get to be 
an early childhood student. You know, I get to experience all these <laughs> right. things. Yeah. It's great. So March 2nd, a day for early childhood educators here in the Missouri District, an uh, opportunity to come together and, and talk with other grown-ups. Um, <laughs> well, m- mostly grown-ups. <laughs> mostly grown-ups. I will be there as well. So uh, that's... But, but to share in, uh, you know, in, in taking a look at the, the, the studies, this research, and and learn how to use this in their own classrooms and um, just a great professional development opportunity for our early childhood educators. So grateful for them. Um, yes. I have a five-year-old who attends early childhood education at St. Mark's in Eureka and so grateful for the teachers there. Uh, we are grateful for that. My wife and I every day, every week, uh, are mention how grateful we are that we know what our, what our son is learning in school each day. Yes. Um, and the most important thing that he's learning there um, from early on, you know, from, from like three years old on, uh, he, he's been learning and will continue to learn about Jesus for him. Mr. Alan Freeman, assistant the president of the Lutheran Church, uh, the Missouri District Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, uh, director of schools. Thank you so much for being our guest on the Coffee Hour today. And uh, we'll provide a link for the uh, information mm-hmm. about the uh, ed- Early Childhood Educators Conference in the Missouri District. Thanks so much for being Thanks our so. guest. Thank you. That does it for the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. <laughs> The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere.